Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Benjamin Gellison, and today I'm going to be talking about transformational leadership. So welcome. I look forward to reading some comments and any follow-ups um, with, with this topic and reading on other forms of leadership. And so far, I will say that this is definitely one of my, my favorite forms of leadership. So let's dive right on in here. So what is transformational leadership? Let's start with a little bit of a brief history here. The term was introduced by Downton in 1973, and it became really well known um, by the political sociologist James McGregor Burns in 1978. And I do like Burns' uh, definition, transformational leadership occurs when uh, leaders and followers raise one another to higher levels of motivation and morality. Now, unlike transactional leadership, which is more of like a task-oriented trade of a job in exchange for money, um, transformational leadership is about leading by example. It gives leaders and followers the ability to look beyond self-interest and it is one of the, the current and most popular styles of leadership um, today. It gives a primary focus to the charismatic and effective elements of leadership. It emphasizes on intrinsic motivation and follower development. Followers want to be inspired and empowered to succeed, and they want to get their needs fulfilled with transformational leaders. And the style of leadership does support growth of transformation it deals with emotions values ethics standards and long-term goals followers really do appreciate their needs being met and makes them feel like human beings which is why this is considered to be one of the most attractive leadership styles it's about followers being able to meet and actually exceed their goals and go beyond what was thought it's about actually talking the walk it's a good little switch up there they are leading and influencing followers to perform beyond what they thought was possible. All right, so what are the components? Well, there'll be four factors. Factor one is idealized influence, or better known as a charisma. Um, it's the emotional touch of empathy and compassion that a leader has in order to act as a role model for followers. These leaders are thoroughly respected for providing a vision and a mission to the team. Factor two is inspirational motivation. This factor describes leaders who communicate high levels of expectations for the team to achieve and inspires them to reach the expectations using motivation tactics for them to stay committed. Now, team spirit is highly increased here through different forms of pep talks and encouraging words like you got this and good job and just showing that you're a human being. Factor three, intellectual stimulation. This factor stimulates followers' creativity, their ability to innovate, and this type of leader is willing to take risks. They wanna challenge the team's beliefs and values as well as their own. I, I think of Steve Jobs immediately during this intellectual stimulation factor breakdown just because of the iPod, the iPhone, he really challenged the whole industry and created a really innovative product that changed history. It transformed the way we listen to music and it has grown ever since. Now, factor four, individualized consideration. This factor shows how a leader listens to the needs and challenges of followers and responds to them with proper coaching techniques to help followers as well as themselves grow through personal challenges. So how can transformational leadership be used? It could be used to create a unified vision of clarity for a successful future. It can motivate the team to go the extra mile and bring everyone to the next level. And it helps followers understand their job identities and the effects of what their jobs have on the greater good of the order. It reminds everyone that their work does have a purpose to reach the common goal of whatever the company's mission and vision is. And it also does 
it can, it can be used to build strong employee loyalty, which will in turn have low turnovers as a result. An example of transformational leadership is a new chief executive officer steps into an organization that's having repetitive losses and flips the strategy around and creates a more clear vision and then in turn creates long-term profits and a long-term vision for the company to be sustainable and survive. Another example is a company that is outdated and needs some serious retooling such as new technology and training that will increase the efficiency of how the, the organization operates. That's a big transition there. And a, another transformational form of leadership is um, a, a new innovative product that paves the way in an industry such as the discovery of the internet. So some key weaknesses here. Now there's no actual proof that individuals and organizations or a new product, an innovative product is able to transform. There is also lack of conceptual clarity, how it's measured. There's not real reliable forms of measuring how effective it is. It carries a lot of personality traits rather than behavioral traits that can actually be taught and learned. And there's not enough info, info on followers' influence on the leader. There's a lot of information on the leader's effect on the followers, but not vice versa. And it has a lot of potential to be misused and abused. So some key strengths. Focal, it's a focal point for leadership since its birth in the 70s. It's consistent with the majority perspective on what leadership actually means. It includes followers and leaders' needs, not just self-interests or just followers. It augments other leadership models. There's a lot of emphasis on followers' needs, values, and morals, and transformational leadership is proven to be effective. Um, there is a lot of evidence that weighs in on transformational leadership as an effective form of leadership. Now, to, to recap here, it is a popular style of leadership that focuses on the greater good of the team and not just individual self-interest. It focuses on the followers and the leader's growth. Influences performance to exceed what was known as possible. You, go, you get to go beyond. You get to go the extra mile. It really pushes your ability. And it's used to create a unified vision of clarity which is definitely helpful in an organization. One that's leading a team that does not have a vision or a goal will not perform as well. It does have weaknesses such as lack of measuring tools, and it does have some strengths such as it includes followers and leaders' needs. And that's my presentation, and I look forward to reading the responses and seeing what other forms of leadership there are. Have a great night.